What is up YouTube, Sam coming back at you with another tabletop RPG review, and today we're going to be taking a look at a third party published uh, supplement. Um, this is going to be an adventure module for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to be taking a look at Beneath the Keep by Chris Doyle, published by Goodman Games. Uh, like I said, this is a third party published module. Um, I want to mention right off the bat that I am not being sponsored in any way to do the, a review of this module. This is just the review that I wanted to do, and uh, I just wanted to share some of the third party options for 5th edition. So this is an adventure module. Um, what is an adventure module? Adventure modules are short um, adventures that are meant to be played in one session, and um, they are sometimes they can be uh, designed in a way where you can just pick it up and drop it in any setting. Sometimes they do have a setting in mind, but uh, it just depends on the adventure module itself. This is a level one adventure, so this is meant for characters of level one, and a group uh, specifically for this module is of uh, four to six players. So, um, before we get into the actual thoughts and opinions, I want to mention a couple things. I want to say that um, I'm not going to do a flip through of this book because there's only like, I think, 17 pages, 16 pages and uh, I don't want to give away anything uh, that would keep somebody from buying this module because I want people to support uh, the people that make these modules. Um, and also there's not really a lot of artwork to look at anyway. I think there's maybe like four or five pieces of art in the module itself. So there's not really a lot to look at other than the map and a couple pictures here and there. So there's no real reason to do a flip through. But I'm going to talk about the story a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk about how I think it might play out and um, my overall thoughts and opinions. So, if you want somebody to run this for you, or if you know your GM or DM is going to be running this for you, uh, I would recommend just uh, either stopping the review here or skipping to the very end and just seeing my final thoughts and opinions because there are going to be spoilers and I don't want somebody to be spoiled if they know uh, that someone's going to be running it for them. So, uh, let's just get right in, into it. Like I said, after this point right here, we're going to be talking about spoilers, so uh, let's get right into the review. So, Beneath the Keep. So, where does this adventure take place? So, this adventure takes place in a wilderness keep in an undescript location. I believe it's in a forest, um, and uh, it is a relatively small-sized keep with some uh, with a small town inside, and. Uh, it has been known to be a, a place of, a, a, like a good uh, waypoint on a lot of different trade routes. So you get a lot of adventurers coming in and out of the uh, keep itself on a regular basis. It's also a, a good place for trade. Um, also in this setting you'll have a, um, it's not really described in, in great detail, but there's also, it touches on a temple that is, I think it said like 20, 10 to 20 miles away from this keep, an old ruined temple, um, and uh, this, the, the whole premise of this is there is this, um, this cult at this ruined temple, um, they're worshipping a chaotic god, and they need human sacrifices in order for uh, their worship. So uh, that sort of is the, the driving force behind this uh, module itself. And uh, there are, I think, two. To th I think there's either two or three named NPCs in this module. Um, one is Garen, who is um, sort of the um, he's he's one of the key characters. But you don't. I mean, I'll, I'll explain it in a second. And then there is uh, I think uh, Eliana, I believe is her name, and she is the main pr uh, protagonist in this. Uh, no, I main an antagonist in this uh, module. So, um, how does this module really start off? So, this is a, uh, a murder mystery sort of module, so um, there's, there's going to be a lot of um, perception checks, there's going to be a lot of um, investigation checks, and there will be um, a lot of wisdom-related checks as well. So, uh, you have a lot of that going on. Um, it's not a terribly complex uh, module, which is good for a level 1 uh, group, especially uh, if you wanted to run this for a brand new set of players, this is a really good way to start. Um, and I think it does a really good job. So uh, 
One thing I really like about this module is it gives you three different ways to start this module. So you can either start it in a in a sort of um, how, how, you can start it. You can start it off as the players are already at the keep itself, and um, basically it's sort of like um, they they either they can either get into like a drunken brawl, get arrested, and then in order to pay off their debts, they have to solve this uh, this crime that's currently uh, being investigated. Um, they can either hear about it from a relative that um, that needs help, or I think the third one was, um, what was the third one? Let me, I didn't really remember the all well, three of those. Uh, so you can either be hired by a friend or family member, uh, Oh, uh, the third one was they um, head to the provision shop in the keep, which is um, where this all sorts of starts, starts off. So Garen is basically a, a shopkeeper in, in uh, this keep, and he sells uh, your normal general adventuring goods. So um, when the players reach the provision store one way or another, uh, they find that uh, Garen has gone has gone missing. Everything in the keep has basically been overturned, and it sort of looks like a, a like a burglary. Um, uh, there's a couple different uh, things that they can do inside the keep. Um, it gives a lot of good uh, little hints here and there, um, but basically, eventually, the players will find out that uh, Garen was actually um, murdered, and uh, it was made to look like a burglary and a kidnapping. So. Um, the whole reason why he was murdered is uh, beneath his sh beneath his shop in in his apartment, uh, there's a secret door leading to these an ancient caverns. And inside these ancient caverns, uh, Iliana is basically set up there. She set up a a small temple to her own god, and she has aligned herself with the Chaos Temple, like ten miles away or so. And she has been the one uh, kidnapping people and bringing them to this Chaos Temple. And once the, her secret, um, her secret uh, caves were discovered by Garen by accident, um, she had to eliminate him to avoid the secret getting out. Um, and that's really sort of the whole hinge of this adventure. Um, some other things, uh, like I said, there are quite a few secret doors. There's some traps as well that are really good. Um, and there is a lot of combat in this module. So there's a couple different combat uh, options in this module itself, you have a couple optional ones, and I think a, I, I would say about half of them are optional, half of them are going to happen. Um, all the combat seems like it is fairly scaled towards the slightly more difficult side from the things that I've seen. There are Some of them are very large encounters too, so uh, for instance at one point you're going to be fighting at least nine enemies at once. So. Um, my advice for that would be that uh, definitely roll single initiative for the bad guys um, because that, keeping track of all that would be just too much, I think. Um, but without giving away too many details, uh, that's basically the whole premise of the module. The players are basically, uh, the point of the players is that they somehow get involved in this investigation. They find the secret door, the secret passage. They will eventually conf they'll un eventually confront Iliana uh, in her main temple area, and one way or another, there's two possible outcomes. There's Iliana can either get away, and she will either uh, run through some secret natural caverns uh, that have a trap door, or the players will defeat Iliana. Either way, the players will have the option to go through these natural caverns. There's a couple extra optional. Um, encounters in the natural caverns, and if Ileana was running away, one thing I really like about this module is it offers two possible endings. So the two possible endings are Ileana either has her last stand at sort of this cliff face um, at the end at the end of these natural caverns, and it's basically where she keeps all of her uh, things that she got from kidnapping the uh, various different NPCs before this advent adventure took place. Um, and she can either have her last stand there, or she can either run away, and the, the GM can choose to make this uh, sort of a good starting 
a reoccurring villain where um, it doesn't, everything after this uh, would have to be up to the GM, but you could have her go to the Chaos Temple uh, and form the Chaos Temple and it'd be a good like sort of starting seed to a cultist-esque campaign. So I, I really like the fact that they sort of give you the idea that you can use this as a starting point. Um, some things about Eliana herself, she's a very difficult uh, boss for uh, a first level party. Um, it's going to require your party to have silver weapons, magical weapons, or a lot of spells because she is uh, actually a wear rat. So she can only be damaged by silver, magic, and, and magical weapons. So there's actually a couple different places in the adventure yourself itself where you can get magical weapons. I think you can get a magical dagger. I think there's five silver um, sling bolts. And um, there are a couple different scrolls you can get as well in this adventure. So you're going to want to make sure that you have a cleric for this because you're going to be taking a lot of damage and you can only really damage with um, magic. Um, also, there's a lot of undead in this adventure, so a cleric would be really beneficial. So I definitely, definitely recommend having one of your players play a cleric in this module. Um, Eliana herself is quite difficult, like I said. She has quite a, I think she has like 8d, 10, is it 10d8 or 8d10 hit points? Let me check. Um, she has... Uh, oh, sorry, I was way off. 68 hit points, which is still a lot for uh, a first level boss. So she is going to be quite a bit of a challenge. Um, she also is very intelligent, so she uses the traps, the natural traps of the cavern and the uh, temple to her advantage. And she um, also, at some point, uh, there's, this, there's a secret optional room that the players can go into, and she'll be able to cast through one of the walls using a peephole that she can look through in the adventure herself. So she can actually deal damage, and you're going to want to keep that secret from the players. So overall, that's basically a summary of the module itself. I think it's a great starting seed. If I had to guess, like I haven't run this myself, but if I had to guess, this would probably look at like a four-hour uh, session uh, that you'd probably be able to get through this, if, especially if you run through combat real fast. Um, on the long end, I'd probably say about six hours at max because uh, some groups, especially with new groups that haven't played before, it might um, be a longer time to get through with all the combat and trying to tell everybody how the rules work and, and whatnot. So, um, also in, uh, so this is the end of the spoiler uh, section. So that's basically the story of uh, the general outline of the adventure itself. I think it's a really good starting point. Like if I had to pick a... A, a, like a, a starting seed, this would be a really good one, especially since you can actually drop this into pretty much any setting. It leaves it vague enough so this would be easy to drop into any setting. And it's a really cool starting point, and it also offers a, a good first arc villain that you can add into your campaign straight off the bat, which is really cool. I like that a lot. Now in addition to the, the um, in addition to the, uh, to the adventure itself, it does have two different sections in the very back. It has two appendices, uh, one inc including two new magical items and uh, also one new spell that is used by Ileana herself in the adventure. Um, so the new spell is called Necrotic Wave. Uh, it's basically a wave of necrotic energy that sweeps out and each th creature in a 30-foot cone uh, must make, make a constitution saving throw, um, otherwise they take a set amount of damage. So um, it's, a, it's a combat spell, and you can deal damage with it, so that's really cool um, that it introduces a new spell. And there's also two new um, uh, magic items in here. You have Oil of Magic Weapon, and it's basically, for one hour, transforms a mundane weapon into a magical weapon using this anointing oil. And then uh, an Elemental Shard, which is basically, it's a, it's a shard that I think, uh, I think it's actually described, yeah, it's, so it's, it's sort of described in the Dungeon Master's Guide and it tells you what pages to check it out as well. So those are the new, the, the new things that it adds in this uh, supplement. Now my overall thoughts and opinions on Beneath the Keep. So I think Beneath the Keep, if I had to give it on a, on a scale of thumbs down to meh to thumbs up, I would definitely give it a thumbs up. I would say I would I would recommend this, especially for a new GM. It's very easy to read and comprehend. 
It's a fairly simple, straightforward adventure. It's It tells you um, a couple different ways to go through the adventure, a couple different ways to start it, some ways to keep your players interested, which I really like. And it also offers two different endings. So if you wanted to end it as a one shot, you can. But if you wanted to, like I said, add it as a, a recurring main arc villain and a good starting seed to a full campaign, you can really do that with this module. So I would highly recommend this module. I really enjoy this module. Uh, this is module number 14 from Goodman Games for 5th edition. Um, I'm definitely going to check out the rest of the modules in the series. I think uh, it's great production quality, definitely tightly edited, and um, it, it offers a lot of bang for your buck in 16 pages. So, um, really cool adventure. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of it. Uh, like I said, um, it's, a, it's a fairly difficult adventure. Um, um, it's not like terribly difficult, but it is on the harder end. It's not going to be a cakewalk, which I like. Um, and yeah, I'll just stop rambling. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any recommendations on products you want me to review, leave them in the comment box below. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.